Hi, my name is Jomar. And my name is Kevin. And we're going to teach you a lesson about electrical current. Electric current is a measure of the amount of electric charge in an electrical circuit. So for example, think of the electric current as being water flowing down a stream. It will keep on flowing unless its source, which would be the pond, dries out. In this example, water flows in one um, direction. This is called direct current. The same principle applies for electric current. The current that flows through cords that are plugged in your wall sockets are called alternating currents. Alternating current flows back and forth in regular intervals called cycles. Cycles is a process of repetition. This is the current that flows from generator to your home. When scientists studied about electricity several hundred years ago, they did not yet infer about electrons. So they inferred that when electric currents pass from one object to another, one object had to have a greater amount of energy. So for example, like this battery, it, it contains a greater amount of energy than the light bulb. So when, when you have the proper tools to connect the both, then the energy from the battery is passed on to the light bulb. As we said before, electric current is the movement of charge. Charge is represented by the variable Q. Charge is also measured in coulombs. Charge is not measured in electrons because electrons are too small to be measured. One coulomb is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. The formula for current is I equals Q divided by T, which also means current equals charge over time divided over time. And time is represented by T and it is measured in seconds. The variable I, is re I represents current, which is measured in ampere. And Mr. Ampere used the variable I to represent current because I is supposed to mean the intensity of electricity. Okay, now as you may remember before, the formula to solve current is I equals Q divided by T. In other words, it's current equals charge over time. An easier way to remember this formula is to draw out the pyramid, or to at least um, think about it. Now, I'm going to show you an example of how to use this. Now, to solve current, you would cover up the current or the variable that you're trying to solve like so. In this case, I'd be solving I, so I'd cover it up. Now, you are left with Q and T. Q stands for charge, T stands for time. Now, to figure out which variable to start off with next, always start off with the top variable if it's available. If not, any variable um, at the bottom will do. But in this case, since we have Q, it'll be good enough. Now, always um, look at the lines to um, know what the, ne what the next step will be. So the next step is Q divided by T, and I'll explain why. The line is a sign of division, the one that is going across the triangle. And you might know why it's division, because basically it's dividing the triangle, so you see why. So Q is divided by T, and that will result in I. And the same thing applies if you're trying to solve time. So you cover up time like so and now you are left with Q and I now since Q is the top variable you divide that see the line and you divide that by I so charge divided by current equals time now so what do you you might be wondering why what to do if you trying to solve Q so you cover it up like so and you now you're trying to solve charge and you may be confused. 
Now this line doesn't really have to do um doesn't really have much um importance right now or in any time actually. But all you have to look at are the two variables. Whenever you're trying to solve the top variable, since you're only left with two variables at the bottom, all you have to do is multiply. And this is this applies for all formulas that um use this triangle type of method. So I times T or current times time would equal charge. Now um just to review, the important um things you should think about when applying this method is that you always cover up the variable you're trying to solve and the other variables that are visible, those are the variables you use. Another thing you should um think about are is this line if it applies to you because it indicates the division and always know that the top variable starts first otherwise if it's one of these two variables um, any one would do because you're going to multiply anyways circuits con contain many components a circuit is a complete path of an electric current a circuit requires a power source, for example, a battery. It also requires condensed wires and a load like a light bulb. In this example of a battery and a light bulb, the light would keep emitting until the battery runs out of power. But if you had a switch, you can control how long the electricity would flow. So now you can see it without a switch and the electricity just flows. But now when you have a switch, you can, you can control, control the power. how much energy would be emitted. So when you turn it off, there's no electrons. There are electrons flowing here out of the negative end through the light bulb, but because the switch is off, the, the electrons aren't going back through here to the positive end. But now when you close it, the electrons can go around in a current. Electric current is measured by an instrument called an ammeter. The unit of electric current is an ampere. Ampere is symbolized by the letter A. An ampere is a measure of a charge moving past a point every second. The circuit symbol for an ammeter is a circle with an A in the center. In this example, you see the battery and the ammeter. Right now, there is one um, conducting wire that is disconnected, so it shows zero amperes. And this is how you measure current. When you connect both wires, you will see that this um, this is how you measure current. This battery shows a current of about 0 0.7 or 7 um, amperes. Okay, here we have an, a battery, an ammeter, and two more ammeters here. But the difference in this experiment is that all the electrons flow from the battery to the ammeter at about five electrons, I mean five amperes, and then the difference is that once it flows from this ammeter to these ammeters, there's a crossroad in this conduction wire. So from here, and it separates here. So that divides the voltage or the amperes in almost two. So in this ampere you see that it has two, about 2.5 amperes and in this ammeter you see that it shows about 2.5 amperes also and then all the energy returns back to the um, battery Here's another problem In the circuit there is a charge of 240 coulombs that pass in 4 minutes What is the electrical current? So there's a box around minutes because that it's four minutes, not seconds. So the formula before current equals charge over time. So now you plug in the numbers. Current equals 240 coulombs per second. I wrote 240 coulombs per second because it's four minutes. Now four minutes is equal to 240 seconds. Now, once you get this, you cross out both seconds. Now you're left with 240 divided by 240.
And that would give you an answer of one. So current would equal one would equal one ampere. Go over a sample problem. In a circuit, there is a charge of two coulombs that pass a point in four seconds. What is the electrical current? Now, as you see here, we are trying to solve the current, and we are given the charge and the time. The charge is two coulombs. The time is four seconds. Now, we must start by writing the formula. I is what we're trying to solve. Current equals Q over T, charge over time. Uh, and now we replace the variables with the values. So 2 coulombs over 4 seconds. And that would equal 0 0.5. Now you must also remember to put the um, unit in which you're trying to solve beside the final answer. In this case, since it's current, it would be A, which stands for amperes. And once again, the final answer would be 0 0.5 amperes. Okay, here's the final equation that we will solve. In a circuit, there is a charge of 25 coulombs that measure to an electrical current of 5 amperes. How long did it take for the charge to pass? Now, I want you to notice that this time we are not trying to solve current. We are trying to solve the time. So, in this case, you might want to refer to your pyramid. If you don't have it with you or if you don't remember, you could go back in the video. So, here would be the Q. And then the I and the T would be at the bottom. So once again, we're trying to solve T. So you cover the T. And then the variables that you're going to use are Q and I. And since there's a line here that uh, indicates division, the R formula would be T equals Q divided by I. So we'll write that down. <coughs> Now we have to replace the um, variables. T equals 25 coulombs over 5 amperes. And our final answer would be 5. And once again, we must put the unit of measure, which is seconds, because Time is always measured in seconds in these types of equations. So, once again, the final answer is 5 seconds. Thanks for watching.